let's talk about the actual state of Linux gaming. And I say this because I saw uh, some big YouTubers come out and mention uh, specifically Linus Tech Tips and Ordinary Gamers. I think they're under the impression that SteamOS is going to be ready for general release in 2025. And the reality and truth is that couldn't be farther from the truth because I doubt we will ever see a general release of SteamOS. And I want to explain why and whatever all this new news is because there's massive misconceptions about what Linux is capable of and what it's really good for because gaming has a place in Linux and it's amazing. And I want to go over all the developments, but I also want to show you the challenges that we face in the Linux community comparative to the Windows community, because you need to know they're not apples to apples kind of comparisons here. Massive differences between just the structure and uh, how things are made. So first off, why would it never get a general release? And the big things is Linux is so different from distribution to distribution hardware to hardware and what goes into it is massively different how windows works is you tack on drivers you install them after the fact which is great for windows i mean it's it's it, it works for them i think it's a terrible system and i think linux is much more stable when it works but the big thing here a general release is you have to account for all the different hardware out there and the linux kernel is where those drivers sit and that's like the brain of it. Think of, it's just not something you can touch or easily add to. You can add drivers, but not in the way you think on Windows. It's not nearly as easy. And typically it is developed over a long period of time. So there's like this sweet spot in Linux when it comes to gaming, where you want hardware that's about one to two years old and has really good massive adoption because you know that's gonna be in the Linux kernel where all the drivers are the drivers reside you know and i want to break that down and i'm talking simple terms here so i i know there's going to already be neck beards calling me out in the comments i'm trying to do this so your normal gamers of the world can understand linux gaming so that's the first challenge uh bleeding edge hardware and just the different configurations it's just almost impossible the second is there's two different renderers in there uh, and there's different subcategories of those renderers. And I want to explain that. Xorg versus Wayland. And I've done videos on these in the past if you want to go deeper dives. But the long short of it is what Xorg and Wayland do is they render graphics on your screen. And then there's compositors underneath that that can give transparency effects. It can kind of sits between the renderer and the game. So it can do really cool things. And what Valve has done is they've picked Wayland, right? Wayland is what they really like, which is great. And they have a micro compositor called GameScope. You've probably heard of these terms. And GameScope can do really cool stuff that you can't even do in Windows, right? So this is where the Linux gamers really nerd out and like, dude, I can change my resolutions really easily. I can switch between like this fake full screen mode. There's a lot of really cool tech built into GameScope and Wayland. But, and this is a big but, uh, NVIDIA kind of sucks and doesn't work very well on Wayland. A lot of NVIDIA people can get it working in Wayland and support is getting better in the future. Sure, it's almost there, but just as general Linux as a whole, if you're an NVIDIA user, you typically don't like Wayland that much. However, it is getting better. It's just not quite there yet. And maybe in the next year or two, but uh, Wayland came out about 10 years to, you know, kind of, take away from XOR because XOR is this really old bloated mess of a uh, renderer and it's just taken a long time to develop because it's not paid by a, a billion dollar company or trillion dollar company to to develop so Wayland's taken a long time to really kind of iron out these kinks and frankly they're not there yet and I don't know when it will be for the past six, seven years I've been making videos, I honestly thought, oh, it'll be a year out when I first started, and here we are. So maybe this year, maybe maybe next decade, I don't know. <laughs> so that's the first thing, the renderer, and then obviously the hardware we've talked about, the NVIDIA issues. 
Um, this is another thing where NVIDIA has, I guess they leaked their drivers in some way, and it's kind of open source. There's something called NVIDIA-Open, and those open source drivers are getting better, and uh, they're also really rough around the edges, so a lot of people install an NVIDIA proprietary driver on there, where if you install that, uh, you need to update it with your kernel every time you do an update. Doesn't sound like a big deal, but there's been sometimes if you've ever done Linux desktop for an extended period of time and you're an NVIDIA user, you probably had some time problems where the screen came up and you forgot to do like a no mode set and it came up all wavy and you're like, I can't see anything, but it, obviously there's some activity or you just get a black screen on an update because the NVIDIA drivers or drivers, I should say, uh, the kernel module that gets tacked on afterwards uh, didn't work properly, which does happen with NVIDIA. So a lot of people skew towards AMD. This is why Valve in the Steam Deck made them with just a built-in baked like AMD chip. Or if they were going to do an external card or do like a Steam machine again, like they did like about 10 years ago now, they would do it with an AMD GPU and not an NVIDIA GPU. And then desktop environment choices in here, I, I wrote down. Uh, they mainly just stick with KDE. There's a lot of different flavors out there. There's a lot of different ways. And I only kind of put this in here because a lot of people have existing systems or existing things that uh, you like in your Linux install. Like some people are GNOME users, the weirdos out there, but you know, who am I to judge? <laughs> but KDE is uh, kind of their choice. And I couldn't see them ever sticking or, or, or moving from that because it's uh, only used every so often on the Steam Deck, but obviously if this was your desktop, this is what you'd live in. And I don't know if that one size fits all approach would work here. Obviously, I think that's probably what they would push, but something to consider as well. So we've talked about that. And probably the biggest point that I think most people miss as well is games and hardware are built with Windows and Mac in mind. Meaning you don't make a game and put it in Linux first. It's always an afterthought. It's always, oh, well, does it work in there? I don't know. Somebody, some neckbeard will probably figure it out and post like some how-to script on how to make it work. And that's the one thing that's really big here. Now, Valve obviously is almost a Linux first platform in a lot of ways, but uh, they still champion Windows because all of the most of their customer base is Windows users. So it's really important to know that. So Valve obviously does. But the thing about SteamOS where it will never really work for a general release, what about all your other non-Steam games? Yes, there's Heroic Launcher. Yes, you can do like Emudeck and other things for emulation. There's a lot of really awesome resources out there. But for the average day user, that's never really going to be a thing. Valve's not going to directly interface with Epic Games. They're never going to, you know, partner with Heroic Launcher and bake all that in. That's never going to be a thing for a general release. And anybody doing Linux gaming is going to want those things. There's going to be times where you're like, hey, I now want to play World of Warcraft or whatever it might be on Blizzard. And they're going to switch off of Steam and go to Blizzard. Or they're going to go to Heroic Launcher because there's some game over there that they got for free. Because that's the only people that use Heroic Launcher. <laughs> so these are the things that are, are hiccups that will never really be solved. Not because of a Linux shortcoming, but just because it's just the way of the world. It's how business is done. And they're never going to build these games or hardware for Linux uh, at least not in the next several years or even probably decade. Uh, it's just very rare that you see that. Now, having said that, I want to, you know, not break down all these categories. These are just generally touching on, hey, this is what the problems of SteamOS general release is and why they would never do it. SteamOS is a fantastic thing, though. Like, you need to realize that it has drastically improved the Linux gaming experience for everyone, not just Steam users. They've done really amazing work with the entire open source community. So I don't want to uh, minimize the impact of the Steam Deck. The Steam Deck has been fantastic. I absolutely adore the Steam Deck. It's been a lifesaver. I use it almost every single night when I'm laying in bed. 
it is a great machine. And I think that's going to continue. What you're seeing with the YouTubers that brought this up is they saw a bunch of powered by Steam OS and these types of systems. Steam will partner with like Lenovo. They are going to partner with other brands that make handhelds like Aoneo and other different uh, manufacturers of these handhelds and they will say hey here's all the little things here's how to make it nice and neat because they want them to run steam os and they have a captive thing a captive audience and they know hey this is the hardware that will work for it and after they say yes we're going to use all this hardware then they go okay slap the steam os sticker on there that's the thing they control the hardware which makes the experience for the end user seamless to where they don't even know they're in Linux, which is fantastic. And that's where the SteamOS future is. It is going to make millions of new Linux gamers, but they're not really going to be on Linux desktop. They're going to be in the Steam ecosystem using these handhelds because it is a fantastic experience. I would even say it's a better experience than playing it on Windows, especially when you have decent hardware doing it. So what about the, you know, average Andy, you know, hey, I want to install a Linux spin and I want to play. I would say Bazite. When it comes to Bazite, it uses a universal spin. It uses SteamOS as its benchmark and it's very flexible. It has NVIDIA support. It has a lot of really cool stuff baked into it and the team has done massive optimization to make a good gaming experience as long as you check like ProtonDB. And if you're interested in Bazite, I did a video specifically over Bazite, which I highly recommend checking out. It's a great like desktop system. I did a little micro PC. I'll, I actually, I did two videos. One was a micro PC running Bazite. And then the other one was actually Bazite itself, uh, where I ran it on my desktop for a full month with, I did like PCI pass through and a bunch of complex stuff with it. So the downside to Bazite I'd say is it's pretty heavy, uh, as you could expect from a gaming atomic desktop but it's very reliable and flexible at the same time where steam os is a lot more rigid so if you're actually using your machine as a desktop i would even let's say they did have a general steam os release obviously i could install that uh, as there is instructions on how to install steam os today on your system it's just not a very good experience where bazite's going to have a way better experience and there's other uh, projects out there. Hollow ISO also gets tossed around by these YouTubers. Guys, this went end of life the beginning of last year. So Hollow ISO is no more. Uh, Chimera, that, that's been around for a little bit. It's also another good alternative. And you have Wines app if you want like a portable Steam OS. That's written by Luke, uh, Luke Smith, prominent uh, blogger, I think for Android authority. And he's great. I've talked to Luke as well. So it just so many great projects out there. My personal pick, I'm not even gonna give you a choice. If you're a gamer and you want a good experience to me, I think the best one for your average user is Bazite. It has the easiest setup. It has less things go wrong. If you're a power user and you're a gamer and you want more control than having like an atomic or a universal blue spin like Bazite, I would recommend Nubara. That's also a video I made several years back. That's also another good gaming spin. And that's kind of where I want to leave this video. Stop recommending or telling people SteamOS is coming out. It's not. And if it does, it's going to suck. And Valve knows this. And they don't want to support your five-year-old rig running NVIDIA cards. They just don't. It's a nightmare. Their microcompositors specifically highly optimized for AMD and their hardware. Uh, and I don't see that changing. Now, there are a lot of people out there that are working on getting the microcompositor game, game scope working for uh, I think Bazite, the Bazite team, I think just leaked a new image for NVIDIA that might have that, uh, or it does have some of that capability. So it is coming, but it's not going to be Valve that brings it to you. And I want to temper expectations as I've ran it way too long here. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. And uh, this is the state of gaming on Linux. It's never going to be 100%. It's never going to beat a Windows in compatibility because things are built for Windows. Uh, and, well, I think a Chromebook will probably beat the Mac soon. So, you, you know, no, no, no gamers actually use a Mac, right? 
right? You better not. That's just weird. <laughs>